Dr. Saurav Chakrabarti, working as an associate professor in the computer science group at the Chennai Mathematical Institute, Tamil Nadu. Before joining Chennai Mathematical Institute, he was a postdoctorate at the Algorithms and Complexity Department of CWI, Amsterdam, Netherlands. He was a postdoctorate at the Computer Science Department of Technion, Israel. He was awarded PhD in Computer Science from University of Chicago. His area of research is theoretical computer science. His focus has been in the classical and quantum complexity of Boolean functions, including property testing, sensitivity, block sensitivity of Boolean functions, and quantum database search in electronic commerce, in graph algorithms, and in coding theory. He has published several research papers in both national and international journals. Welcome to the UGC lecture series in computer science and the topics is algorithms. So, today we will be looking at sorting algorithms and lower bounds for sorting algorithms. So, in the last few lectures, we have seen various algorithms for sorting and today we will be comparing these various algorithms and then we will be looking at some lower bound techniques for getting some understanding of how good a sorting algorithm can be. So, we start with the problem in hand is that given a set of integers, we want to sort the elements in the set S in an ascending order. Now, this is a very well known and well studied problem. For example, here we have a set S which is 1, 4, 2, 10, 5, 8, 15, 13, 7, 8 and 1 and we want to sort these elements in this set in ascending order. So, we want to output this number 1, 1, 2, 4, 5, 7, 8, 8, 10, 13 and 11, 15. Now, there are a lots of sorting algorithms in this field and here are just a handful of them out of which we have seen till now these four algorithms insertion sort, quick sort, merge sort and heap sort. Before we go on to compare these four things, we need to revise all these four things. So, in the case of insertion sort, the idea was to maintain a sorted list. So, we start from an empty list T, which is of course sorted because it is empty. Now, we take one by one elements from the set S and insert it in the T in the right place. Now, at the end, we will have the whole set T which will be sorted and there will be no more elements in the S left. So, we will output the set T. One important thing is that we can do the same thing that is we can maintain the set T or list T in the same place where the set S is stored. Thus, we do not need to have any extra space. So, in summary we had that insertion sort had running time or number of steps around n square plus 3 n by 2, whereas the space complexity as such we did not need any extra bit of space, but to store the indices we need log n bits. Natural question was can we do better that is we can we get a better running time while maintaining space complexity log in and quick sort was the answer to it. So, for quick sort we picked an element s x from the set s and then we split this set s into two halves less than x and greater than x and then we recursively sort these elements in the less than x part and the greater than x part. Now, everything of this splitting and everything can be done in place that is again we can reuse this space that is used by the set S. So, we do not need any additional space for splitting this set S into these two parts less than x and greater than x. For the summary of quick sort, the time complexity was more or less same it was around n into n plus 1 by 2 and the space complexity was log n because we did not need any extra space. The question next was can we do better or in other words is quick sort any better than insertion sort 
and the answer was yes instead of picking the first element x from this set if we pick a random element x from this set then the quick sort has run time expected run time n log n. So, although the worst case run time still remains as n into n plus 1 by 2, but the expected run time is n log n which is clearly better than n square which is what we get for insertion sort. The next was was can we do better than this that is can we get a run time n log n the worst case run time n log n and yes we can do better the idea is the merge sort the merge sort we split this set into two halves equal halves then we sort recursively these two halves and finally we merge these two sets problem here is that this splitting this set into two halves and this merging cannot be done in place so although merge sort attains a better worst time that is the worst case running time becomes twice n log n which is as good as the average case running time for quick sort and much better than the worst case running time of both insertion sort and quick sort the space complexity becomes n the next question was can we combine the best of the both worlds that is can we obtain a algorithm with runtime n log n and space complexity log n and the answer was yes it can be done in the case of heap sort and in the case of heap sort we basically do everything like an insertion sort except instead of using a sorted list to maintain the uh, sorted elements we maintain it in a heap so we arrange the elements in a heap structure and we use the heap to sort the elements so this one obtains the runtime of thrice n log n whereas it cannot it doesn't need any extra space so space complexity because n becomes log n so here is a comparison between all the algorithms so we have quick sort insertion sort, quick sort, merge sort and hip sort. In the case of space complexity except for merge sort all of the others require only log n space. In case of runtime, insertion sort and quick sort is worse compared to merge sort and hip sort which are n log n. But in case of the quick sort one can get an randomized runtime which is slightly better than the rest till now we have seen these four algorithms now there are many other algorithms one natural question to ask is that why are there so many algorithms in this field just for this particular problem the second question is that can one get even better algorithms both of them are very natural question we will answer the first one first that is we will try to understand why an algorithm can be preferred over the other and third the second part which is can one get a better algorithm we will answer it in the next half so we start with till now we have seen two or three main parameters which is the worst case running time we have looked at the expected running time and we have looked at the space used under these three parameters it seems that hip sort defeats all the other three in a very easy way heap sort uses the best worst case running time which is n log n and the space uses just log n but there are other properties that we might expect from an algorithm we have seen it briefly in one of our earlier lectures but let's see properties that we are looking for are something like simplicity how simple is an algorithm to implement second one is a very important thing is what kind of data structures are required in particularly because sorting algorithm is such an important algorithm that we might have to sort data of various kinds and certain data will be given in a one form while there are some other data will be given in some other form so what kind of data structures are required by the various algorithms is something we need to study third is the adaptiveness so that means that if i have a sorted list or rather i have a list which is almost sorted 
just a few play things are out of place can i have an algorithm that sorts it very quickly or will i need a lot of time to sort it third one is the online data means imagine that the set s is not given to us at one go but it comes one by one and in that case we need to have an algorithm that adapts itself as it as and when the next element comes which of our algorithms can do that the next one is this stableness now stableness basically says that we might have two elements in this set which are comparably same but then we want to maintain that one of the the one that comes before in the set s should also come before in the sorted set so this is what we call stable so stableness is very important because sometimes an data has been sorted based on some parameter and then we want to sort it based on some other parameter so we want to make sure that the person who is better in both of them should come first and so stableness is a very important property that we want in a algorithm then there is this thing of parallelizability so in the modern world where we are moving from a single computer to distributed computing or parallel computing where we have lots of computers connected to a network and hence can be used all the cpus can be used to help us in sorting something or solving some problem quickly an algorithm should be parallel in the sense that can be made parallel efficient enough to use the distributed network system which of these algorithms can do it is a very important question so these are the properties that we want to look at let's go over one by one and try to see which of our four algorithms satisfy what to start with the simplicity now this is a property that is very qualitative there is no proper understanding of what is a simple algorithm and what not it depends a lot on the person to person one thing one might say that insertion sort is the easiest of them then comes the quick sort then comes the merge sort and then comes the heap sort but this is a property that isn't very rigid it depends a lot on what what programming that person is using and all such things let's look at some more interesting properties for example the data structure now as we said data structures are very important because we need to understand which algorithm will require what data structure to start with let's see the insertion sort here we have just taken two sample data structures namely arrays and linked lists insertion sort works for both arrays and linked lists we have seen that all that we require is to insert an element in a data structure and if the data structure is an array then also we can insert it by after doing binary search then insert it by moving the whole element and same for linked list in the case of time complexity both of them are almost similar just a little bit off in the case of the array in the case of quick sort again both arrays and linked lists are fine in the case of merge sort again both arrays and linked lists are fine because all of them we have not done too much hard work we have just either compared two things or swapped two things we have in, in most of the time compared two indices compared i with j and that's all we have just assumed that this set data is stored in a linear fashion but let's look at heap sort in the case of heap sort we do need this tree structure of this algorithm very crucially and a tree structure once we are in a node we need to access its parent or its child immediately and so an array is fine because there we can go from one place to the another in the case of linked list we cannot do that so in the case of heap sort linked list is not going to work what will work possibly is something called a doubly linked list which is let you have a two way arrow between two neighboring sets anyway this one is a much more complicated data structure to handle and we will not go too much into details of that we'll take a short break now after the break we'll see the other properties 
and talk about the lower bound technique. Welcome back after the break. Before the break, we were looking at various properties um, and trying to compare the algorithms across with these properties. So, let us start with, with adaptiveness. So, adaptiveness basically says that whether an algorithm can handle almost sorted list. That is if we give you a set which is almost sorted, then can it be easily sorted. And unfortunately, among all these four algorithms that we have seen, insertion sort is the only adaptive algorithm. In other words, if only d of the elements are out of place, then insertion sort will take only n plus d steps. For no other of the algorithm that is quick sort, mod sort or hip sort, adaptiveness works. So, this clearly shows that insertion sort also has a lot of advantage. The next one is the online data. So, as the data are coming in a streaming fashion, can we sort it easily? And here also, insertion sort can handle online data and only mod sort, quick sort or hip sort cannot handle online data. You might want to go back and check all these various properties and rigorously prove that whatever I am saying here is true. The next one is this stability or in other words, which of the algorithms maintains the relative order. And it turns out that while insertion sort maintains the relative order, quick sort does not, mod sort does and the hip sort does not. So, this is a case where insertion sort and mod sort has an advantage over quick sort and hip sort. The next one is this parallelizability, which of these algorithms can be made parallel. In short, if something can be done in a recursive way, for example, in the case of mod sort, we split it up into two halves and we say that okay, sort this first half and sort this second half. Now, this sorting this first half can be allocated to some other computer, whereas sorting the second half can be given to some other computer. So, thus, mod sort kind of stuff where we do the recursive algorithms, they can be parallelizable. And thus, we see that insertion sort is not parallelizable while as quick sort and mod sort and hip sort is not parallelizable. So, with this we come to the end of this set of properties that we were studying. There are many other properties that one might want to consider and the basic idea is that every algorithm has its own advantages and disadvantages. Now, one thing to note here is that all this algorithm that we have described here is what is known as comparison based algorithms. Here the algorithms we are sorting just based on the fact that they are comparing between two objects. They were not assuming that the objects are integers or words or any such thing. They are just asking two elements which of them is bigger and accordingly making the decision. So, they do not use any other structure of the set as such and thus it also works for all kind of sets. So, all the algorithms that I defined described here are very general. For example, say here insertion sort, quick sort, mod sort, hip sort, all these sort, sorting algorithms we have seen till now are of this form. So, in the case of this comparison sort based algorithms, we have these four algorithms and here is this space and runtime complexity. We also saw various other properties. The natural question to ask is that can we improve this algorithm somehow? So, can one get an algorithm with runtime less than n log n, whereas the space complexity is also less than log n. So, let us first look at the space complexity. In the space complexity, it seems that log n is a natural bound because as I have told many times, although one does not need to store any extra bit of information, even to store the indices like for all i equals to 1 to n or something like that, we need log n space. So, log n seems to be the right amount. Other than storing the indices, we do not need any constant number of space for insertion sort, quick sort or hip sort. In the case of time complexity, the situation is very interesting. Let us first see what is a comparison sort does. So, comparison sort will take two elements A and B, some elements 
and then decide if a is less than b then we do something if a is greater than b then we do something so this creates what is called a decision tree it's like the flow chart of the algorithm here is an example like if we want to sort three things a b and c i first compare a and b now if a is less than b then i will go and compare b and c but if a is greater than b then i will go and compare a and c similarly if a is greater than b and then i compare a and c and if a is less than c what do i have i have that b is less than a is less than c thus my output should be b a c but if i end up coming here and say that a is greater than c so i will have that b is less than a c is also less than a and now i need to compare between b and c to understand how where they are standing so we compare b and c and again if b is less than c we will output b c a if b is bigger than c we will compare will output c b a so similarly we have this decision tree note that all our algorithms till now like the insertion sort heap sort merge sort quick sort have been comparison based algorithms and hence have their own decision tree so some important thing is that the height of the decision tree is the worst case complexity of the algorithm let's go back and see for example in this decision tree what is the worst case complexity worst case complexity is when the situation is that i have been given a b c and c is less than b c is less than a and then i first compare a and b then i compare a and c then i compare c and b so the total number of comparisons before i end up getting my right answer is 3 which is the height of the decision tree there might be some cases for example like bac where the number of comparisons made is just two but the worst case run time or worst case number of comparisons is the height of the tree the other important fact is that all the different permutations must be in the leaves we can go back and again see this thing that all the permutations that you can think of abc are there in the leaf because when somebody has given me abc any of the permutations are possible abc is possible acb is possible cab is possible bac is possible like on any possible permutations which is in our case 3 factorial which is 6 so 6 possible combinations are there and after going through this whole decision tree i should be able to say okay here is the permutation that we are looking for thus all the different permutations must be there in the leaves now if i have a decision tree of height h then what is the total number of leaves note that if the height is h then at height 2 it is 2 to the power 2 which is 4 similarly at height h the total number of leaves is less than 2 to the power h total number of permutations is n factorial so thus clearly we see that 2 to the power h must be greater than n factorial or in other words h must be greater than log of n factorial note that height h is the worst case run time of any comparison based algorithm so now we have h is greater than log of n factorial now n factorial is 1 into 2 into 3 into 4 into it goes on till n over 2 times n over 2 plus 1 times so on so the last n over 2 multiplication factors are all greater than n over 2 so one can easily say that n factorial is greater than n over 2 to the power n over 2 and thus log of n factorial is greater than n over 2 log n over 2 and which means that the worst case run time must be more than n over 2 log n over 2 this is a very interesting and important observation that the no comparison based algorithms can get better than n over 2 log n over 2 run time so this is what we call as the lower bounding of the time complexity
to wrap up we see that we have various algorithms these four algorithms that had various run times and we also had this lower bound now one might note that i have many times used the constants in a very non precise manner sometimes i call it n into n plus 1 by 2 i say it as n square and so on the idea is that the constant factors don't matter that much to use that understanding that no constant factors don't matter that much we in computer science use something called an asymptotic notation so what is an asymptotic notation so let's say fn and gn are two functions then we say that fn is big o of gn if fn is less than some constant times gn plus some constant so in other words that up to constant factors fn and gn are similar for example one can say that 10 n square is equals to o of n square or 5 log n plus 3 is o of log n or something like n into n plus 1 by 2 is big o of n square this is a very important notation that we use a lot for our simplicity so when we say that the running time is o of n square it means that it is some factor of o n square constant factor of n square so under this set of notations one can say that we have this comparison based algorithm where the space complexity for insertion sort quick sort and merge sort has been o of log n whereas in the case of merge sort it has been o of n and in this case of run time it is o of n square for insertion sort and quick sort and in the case of merge sort it is o of n log n we have also a similar set of notations called omega which says that it is greater than or in other words if fn is o of gn then gn is omega of fn so in other words n into n plus 1 by 2 is omega of uh, n square and so on so thus n over 2 log n over 2 is omega of n log n and is also theta of n log n if something is less than n log n and greater than n log n so it's theta of n log n so these are just as a notations for looking at the constant factors so under this thing what we can say is that there is a sorting algorithm that takes order n log n steps and order log n space we can say also lower bound that all sorting algorithms take omega n log n steps and omega log n space and when we have such kind of a thing we say that time complexity for sorting is theta n log n so when we have the first two statements we can make the second statement and the space complexity is theta log n so with this we kind of end, come to the end of our lecture the next question i will leave you guys with some question first of all is there some other algorithm which are not comparison based can we do something better the other thing is that if the set comes with some structure can we do something better so that means we are not trying to do something for all possible sets but some other structured set this is a quest typical question that we will answer in the next lecture to do summarize today we looked at the various algorithms for sorting that we have studied and we compared them for various properties we also looked at how to obtain a lower bound on the time and space complexity for sorting with this we come to the end of this lecture in the next lecture we will look at non count uh, comparison based algorithms thank you